We are back in the Weather Center with Axe, your meteorologist, and it's Jacob Dickey. I'm so happy to be here. With yeah, you. it's so great to have you here as well. And, My uh, first AY. It is, it is. You've been watching the sidelines as, uh, you know, mess with Heather, so now it's my turn to mess with you. <laughs> well, you do that whether it's that's AYM that's, or whether I'm in my that's office. That's true. She's got the office down there, and every so often I've been frequent visitor. No, frequent thank visitor. you, Jacob. Yes. Um, okay, I have not managed to see the northern light. You with have my, not? No. How do I keep missing it, and how do those colors form? Uh, yeah, we got some questions. There's that viewer question. A lot of people have asked us, you know, if you got the chance to see the northern lights, uh, a lot of questions about that. So let's uh, talk about that uh, with we've seen the Northern Lights. How do those colors form here? And uh, first off, I want to explain how the Northern Lights come to be. That may be the first place to start before we get to the colors and things like that. So there's Earth right there. And then the Earth has a magnetic field. North Pole and South Pole is where that field concaves inward here. And uh, what we see is energy comes off the sun. We are looking for a solar flare call it a CME, a coronal mass ejection. It's just a burst of energy. Sun does it a lot. We're at a solar maximum every 11 years. That happens. And so every so often we see those solar bursts come in. The solar wind brings those particles our way. Sometimes they maybe go a little out and away. It just depends on how it's oriented here. But as those particles interact with the Earth's atmosphere here, the poles is where the magnetic field is the weakest. Those particles can come in, and when that happens, then we start to see the northern lights. That's because those electrons are colliding with various molecules in the atmosphere. Those molecules tell us what color the northern lights will be. We've actually been able to be the uh, colors here. If you see red, you're talking above 200 kilometers up, way up high in the atmosphere. That's oxygen molecules. If you see blue, that's pretty rare to see blue. You see nitrogen molecules being affected. Sometimes you'll see purples. We had a little bit of purple reported. Then the green is most common. That's oxygen molecules, 100 to 200 kilometers up. And then typically anything that's lower than 100 kilometers closer to the surface of the Earth is going to be that pink color. So I got a number of photos here. You missed them. You can bring these full screen as well in Max 1 if you want. Look at those pretty colors that were in the sky there. Weren't they spectacular to see? Yes. And then, so does the different colors go based off of the weaker point, like how weak the atmosphere is? It, it's the is molecules is what it oh, is. So that okay. pink color is those molecules way up high, uh, and then the greens are, are closer to the ground. So there's a great image of that. That reddish pink color way up high, 200 kilometers. You see the greens a little bit below that, and that's a great photo of uh, what we saw. Uh, lots of photos of that, and all different colors are coming on in. We are looking for one of those solar substorms as well get a sudden burst of energy to come through, and that could be the case for that. I do want to show you one other cool thing real quick. Show we, may, we may only have one question. That's fine. Something else you could look for in the sky, a comet. It's the Shinshin Comet. I probably butchered what? the name of that. So, but essentially, you can see a comet in the western horizon uh, from sunset to about 45 minutes afterwards. You've been having some sightings of it in recent days here with a clear sky. That's, you'll see it slightly higher in the western sky as we get to... Uh, into the uh, next week or so. So be sure and look out west and see if you can spot that. Cameras can pick it up just like they could the Northern Lights, but we've had some folks that have been able to see that with the Northern Lights. So I did want to mention that as well because I have a feeling that next week for AIYM, mm -hmm. people are going to ask, what was that and now in the know. sky? And this is what it was. It does sound like you're speaking a foreign language when you talk about this stuff, Hello. but it's so interesting. It the, the sky is a fascinating place. You've got northern lights, you've got comets, uh, different things like that that are all a part of that. I do have my own question. Do you? How often should we see northern light? Like, we've been seeing it a lot lately. You're right, and the reason for that is the sun has a well-established 11-year solar cycle, so ele every 11 years you see a maximum in that, and so uh, 11 years ago it wasn't all that spectacular for us, but uh, it seems like this go-round, this 11th year cycle, it has been really fascinating to see. So, not a surprise. We are not surprised to see this solar activity 22 years ago was another great solar cycle for us lots of northern lights uh, but uh, we're seeing that we had may we've had several some sightings and then this most recent one as well well it's probably have more to come so okay I'll, that's I'll, what I'll, i wanted to know i'll text you yeah let five me bucks. know so five bucks for her. High right now right okay um jacob we appreciate yeah, you thanks for being here yes and if you are interested in submitting your weather related questions for next week We'll connect you with Jacob. There's his information. We'll connect you over at CILiving.tv.